Good morning, everyone. I'm Rahul. I lead the front end team at Housing. Uh, as the name suggests, we are into home buying, and for most of our users, home buying is a once in a lifetime event. And it's a long journey before they settle for their dream home. Uh, we have native apps to facilitate that experience uh, with native performance, better re engagement, and offline experience. But we also had few challenges like poor internet connections mostly 2G and 3G, and low-end devices in terms of computation, memory, and storage. So these kept our users from downloading our apps and thus hindered our business to reach their goals. We also had our mobile website, uh, which looks something like this. Uh, the problem with this was it, it was a monolithic code base, having desktop and mobile uh, tangled together. And the components were kind of bloated because of the ifs in JavaScript and the media queries in our CSS. And um, that eventually affected our performance. Right? So we thought about uh, we have to cater the growing need of our uh, user, mobile user base. And we chose to upgrade our mobile website to something that can compete with our native apps. Uh, the reason being simple, web has uh, better discovery and a wider user, ba user base uh, than any other platform. Also, the cost of bringing a user to our mobile web was 50 times cheaper for us than bringing the same user to our native apps. So uh, it, it was the deal breaker. Like uh, We started off building our mobile website. The first and the foremost thing that we had was to support all the major browsers that are out there uh, that our users use on more than 2,000 different devices that they have. So this was our first aim. And then we thought, once we have this part done, we'll upgrade that experience to compete with our native apps. Uh, so we built Housing Go. Uh, and we were happy uh, with the kind of metrics that we saw. We were able to bring down our page load times by 30%. We, are, we were having 10% longer user sessions. And the bounce rate was cut down to 40%. On top of all this, the most important part was 38% more conversions on our mobile website. That really helped our business realize the goals much sooner and effectively than earlier. And yeah, I'd like to call upon stage Ritesh, who will be taking us through the journey of how we built this. Good morning. So uh, I'm Ritesh. I'm a front-end developer at housing.com. So let's talk about how we actually built it. From the start, we were focusing on four key, uh, key areas. Uh, the first one is that we wanted to deliver assets fast. Then we wanted to bring down the time to first meaningful paint, uh, and also the first JS-enabled interaction time. And at the same time, we had to improve the experience of our returning users. So. Uh, most of the other performance metrics actually depend on when is your asset delivered. So this is a waterfall of a traditional website. First, your whole HTML loads, and then other asset requests goes. So you have to wait for whole HTML to load before making a request. So when you analyze your code, you'll find that there's a certain part of your code that needs no computation or no API request. Uh, so let's talk about HTML streaming. Now, this is how it looks like on client side. Uh, first, we send the initial chunk uh, that only contains, uh, contains the code that needs no computation. You can see there's pre-connect, preload, and the critical inline CSS. Now, sending the preload, we actually uh, start the request for critical JavaScript earlier. I will talk about uh, them. So now, this is the full HTML. After the server has made API requests, and uh, it has received all the responses. It sends all the HTML. Uh, now, this has body, initial one didn't had, uh, and this has all the content. Now, the size of full HTML is around 15 KB, but the first response that the server sent was around 4.2 KB, this zzip. Uh, so preload. Most of the time, the developers already know that a particular route is going to need a few critical resources. You can uh, load them in advance. and so uh, by using HTML streaming and preload in combination, we were able to start the request for critical JS much earlier than other assets. So 
after we were done with uh, asset delivery, we went ahead to improve our render time. And by render, I mean the first meaningful paint. Now the difference between first paint and first meaningful paint. On the left side, you see that that's first paint. First paint is anything, when there's anything, any pixel available on your phone, most of the time that's not relevant and user feels like waiting. And uh, when the relevant content is there, that's the first meaningful paint. Now we wanted to zero down the difference between these two. So we experimented with server-side rendering. Uh, I am saying experimented because you should always measure before you Im implement. So this is a traditional app shell model uh, on first load. Till 2.2 seconds, there's a white screen of death. You have nothing to see. Then there's a state where you have something, but it's not relevant to the user. He still has to wait. And around seven seconds, he sees the first meaningful content. Now, the region before 2.2 seconds and seven seconds is what we call the loading screen of purgatory. <laughs> so, so the user doesn't know what's going to happen. He may receive the content. He has to wait for a certain amount of time. And if there's any error, he will have to wait in that state forever. So we wanted to improve this. We wanted to remove this totally. So this. This is after SSR enabled. Now, uh, when we impl implemented server-side rendering, the first meaningful paint happened at 2.3 seconds. And that was quite an improvement. And this, uh, all these tests have been run with uh, web page test. Uh, uh, the, it's written on the bottom. So, so the, there's also a bonus that when we implement a server-side rendering that uh, the basic meaningful content is available for everyone. I mean, uh, as Rahul said that we have users using more than 2,000 types of devices. And so there are a variety of users uh, with different browsers. The versions may be older ones. So the basic content of, is rendered for all of them. So that's a bonus. So till now, I've talked in bits and pieces about how we improve JS uh, enabled interaction. But the main thing that you need to do uh, for improving JS enabled interaction is that uh, you need to ship less code, less JS. So lesser the JS, faster will be the interaction time. Now, when you ship uh, less code, you will have to lazy load resources on demand. And this brings us to code splitting. We are using Webpack 2 for code splitting, and we do both JS and CSS sharding. So generally, the chunks that we make, uh, we divide them into two categories. Uh, the first one of them is route-based chunks. Now, when a user lands to a particular route, first we make a call for the main JS file that that view will require. And in parallel, we make a request for the corresponding CSS file. So when the CSS file has been loaded, we allow the navigation. And after he's idle, uh, we make a call for the next probable route that he might navigate to, so that when the user uh, navigates to that route, the transition is almost instant. So next, I come to the second category. That's intent-based chunks. Now, these are the chunks that are only required when the user does a particular kind of interaction, like scrolling or click, uh, and doesn't involve any route change. Now, let's take an example. Uh, this is a, our listings page. Now, on top right, you can see a Notify button. Now, by analytics data, we know that this is a kind of button that gets clicked once in few sessions. And the corresponding view that it requires has, it's of 32 KB unzip. So it makes no sense to, to load that with the main JS bundle, because most of the times it will go unused. So we require it only when the user has clicked on that particular button. Uh, so after doing all this, currently we are at a stage where our first meaningful paint happens at around 2.3 seconds. And the first uh, JS enable interaction starts at around 4.2 seconds. Now, by JS enable interaction here, uh, I don't mean the DOM content loaded. We have uh, defined a custom metric, like we, we calculated this when the component actually mounts. Like, since we are using React, uh, it, for us, it is actually component did mount. So this is, the ti this is the time when the component did mount gets triggered. So I've talked about how we push critical resources using preload. Uh, we have improved render using uh, SSR and inlining critical CSS. Uh, 
we are pre-caching uh, assets using service workers, as Rahul will tell you. And we are lazy loading uh, resources on demand. So we are very much uh, near to what the purple pattern promotes. And so till now, what I have discussed has improved the experience of first-time users. Now, we also had to improve the experience of returning users. So I'll call back Rahul to tell you more about that. Yep. Uh, so as I told you, finding a dream home is a long journey. Uh, user comes online multiple times to make his searches, to compare the houses he's seeing, the property he's seeing. Uh, so it was very important for us to make a compelling returning, uh, uh, re returning user experience so that uh, we make that journey as smooth as possible. Uh, we use service workers to precache few resources on install and uh, act as a proxy for our subsequent network resources so that, and so that it can serve them from the cache directly when it's requested second time. Uh, by doing this, we have uh, been able to bring down the first meaningful pain that happens for a first time user at around 2.2 seconds to 700 milliseconds, and the first JS enabled interaction from 4.2 seconds for a first time user to 1.1 seconds. Uh, did this, this, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, we also uh, implemented add to home screen features to give users to the access to instantly uh, interact with our app directly from their home screens. And we implemented push notifications. Uh, I like to mention that uh, the kind of conversion rates that we are having from push notifications are almost beating few, few other channels that we have. So that's, that's one thing that's taking us closer to our apps. Uh, the offline navigation. Uh, this was important for us because whenever you, a user visits for the actual site visit, uh, the properties are generally at the outskirts of cities where we, uh, the network is very flanky or uh, absolutely no network. So this experience helped them to actually uh, revisit their session or relook the properties they have already done on, on the mobile. We use Credentials Management API to keep our users uh, almost logged in virtually almost every time so that uh, their information is synced across devices very uh, smoothly. Yep. So once we were done building uh, the app, it, the main question that we had is, how do we maintain this? We have done a lot of things to uh, maintain the uh, first, uh, first pain time, first JS enable interaction time. But as, uh, as the product evolves with a lot of, lot of features, the, it's very difficult to keep in check these metrics. So we came up with our own system of uh, uh, continuous integration with Webpack and Webpage test, and we made it as easy as just putting a label on a PR in GitHub. So if you, if you are done with your code and you raise a PR, you just need to put a label run test, and we'll put out all the information that needs to track, track these metrics right on, on the uh, GitHub PR, like the chunk sizes. Uh, it helps a reviewer uh, know that how this PR is changing or modifying the chunk sizes that we already serve. Uh, the uh, few route-based statistics, like the first paint, uh, when, what's the speed index of the uh, few of the critical routes that we take care of. Also, the network and the timeline view. This helps uh, the reviewer get an essence of what resources and are loading and how they are loaded. So I think this was very important to us uh, to close the loop of the complete development uh, from the development and maintenance. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, not always, uh, we, we are yet to do a lot of things to make the app faster. And one of the uh, things that we are experimenting is moving from React to Preact. Uh, we, we have seen that in our initial prototypes, moving from React to Preact has brought down uh, a difference of 122 KB in our, in our vendor bundle. And that's huge, like that's around 700 to 800 milliseconds of JS enable interaction time gain on the client side. Uh, we are also uh, experimenting with AMP uh, to let our users have uh, almost in instant uh, uh, experience when they come through Google's, uh, Google results page. So thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>